After being a Formula One fan and a programmer for many, many years, I've been wondering how data and generative AI is used within my favorite sport. So when I was given the opportunity to chat to former F1 strategy engineer, Bernie Collins, I had so many questions. Let's take a look. So Bernie, can you tell me about how data is used in Formula One? Yeah, I think, you know, data in Formula One, we've been collecting lots of data for years and years. Teams have been collecting data, F1 itself have been collecting data. And I think now we're just at the point where we're starting to realize the power of that data and how we can use it through the generative AI and some of the things that AWS are doing to use that historic data in order to bring, you know, the stop up thing, for example, bring that information to the forefront, try and give us insights into historic data that we've not had before. We've been collecting data for years, not really sure what we can do with it, and now we're starting to realize the power of that data. Can you tell me a bit more about StatBot? Yeah, so StatBot is basically a method of using, AWS uses that in order to dig into F1's historic data, okay. try during a race to look at, okay, for example, if we have an overtake in turn four at Imola, okay, when's the last time an overtake happened in that corner, or oh, okay. how many corners, does, or how many times does an overtake generally happen there, that sort of information. So, like I say, we have lots of information, overtakes is an easy one, lots of information of when overtakes happen, who overtake whom, hmm. how quick were they, whether it was DRS or not, but now we're able to really quickly pick through that and find the relevant data to what's currently happening on track. And the idea is that from a commentary perspective or from a viewing perspective, we're able to pick out the relevant bits of information really quickly. Okay, so it's, it's almost like having a, a knowledge bank that you can easily find what you're looking for. Exactly, if you could pause the race and go through all of your files of information and find the bit that was relevant to that corner, it's doing that in a much, much quicker, quicker fashion that keeps the race flowing. Okay, and you were at Aston Martin for how many years? So I was at Aston Martin from 2015 or 14 it was then until the middle of 2022, so seven and a bit years. Can you tell me about how the use of data changed from when you first joined the team to when you, uh, when you eventually left the team? I think in, in all F1 teams, the use of data has exploded. We've you know, if I think of a very simple example from a, a team side, in pit stops in 2015, we had very little information about what was happening in each corner, in the guns, in the jacks, for example. And now you can see when you watch a pit stop on F1, how much data we're collecting. You know, we've got the automatic lights at the front of the car to release it. You know, in 2015, we were generally using lollipops, for example, yeah. or whatever. So we progressed the data that we're collecting immensely. We're able to transfer it quickly between the track and wherever our factory is, share it very quickly, talk about it in real time, and st store it in a method that's easily accessible for everyone. So all of those things that is happening in the outside world as well have allowed F1 to really harness a lot of data a lot more quickly. So the amount of information we have access to is really grown. What would you say is the most impressive technical innovation from a data point of view that happened during your career? I think one of the biggest things was previously, purely from a strategy side, we were looking a lot at sort of lap times and sector times. Okay. Um, and that gives a good picture of what's happening in the race weekend. But really in the last, I don't know, set, 10 years at least, we've really progressed how we use GPS. Okay. So that allows us real time to look at a competitor and say, oh, they're lifting and coasting, for example, in one corner, or they're using more battery power, or they're running lighter fuel or whatever we think the case may be. So real time, we can overlay our car's data with a competitor's data. Okay. And that wasn't happening when I was joining the sport. So without the, without the GPS, did that mean that you didn't have access to a competitor's data? We had compa access to like their three sector times, okay. but that gives a very small picture of where they're weak and strong. Okay. And now with GPS, we can say specific corners, whether it's corner entry, whether it's on break-in, whether it's on throttle, you know, very detailed information about where our weaknesses and strengths lie relative to a competitor. Okay, so now let's move on to generative AI. How is generative AI being used in Formula One? Yeah, I think there's lots of methods where AI is being used in Formula One. If I think again, purely from a strategy side, we use a lot of machine learning, particularly, um, in order to simulate what the race may look like. So strategists on a well, pre-race, Friday night, Saturday night, are trying to hone their models of what's the correct strategy, which tires to run, when to do the pit stop. And we use these machine learning models that have lots of variables in it, be that, you know, the tires, when safety cars will come. And that's allowing us to really focus on, on where the correct race may be. Okay. And again, teams are now using that on the pit wall live during the race because 
every lap during the race you reduce the unknowns. So the unknown, unknowns reduce, so your model can, can become more and more accurate. I think from an AWS side specifically, we've seen the, the power of AI, of AI in really being able to develop the car. So we've developed the car now that has um, reduced um, downforce disturbance um, in order to allow cars to call it, follow more closely. Okay. And that's because we've been able to use the power of AI in order to very rapidly develop and simulate CFD models. And okay. teams are doing that as well. So now that you've left Aston Martin, you've moved into a commentator role. Can you tell me a bit more about how generative AI is useful as a commentator? I think like, you know, a really easy example is the AWS close to the wall file insight. So previously you'd hear commentators or pundits saying, oh, that was close to the wall. Mm. And now actually we've got a method for that and some insight that we can show on our TV screens and everyone can sort of understand, okay, well, how close was close to the wall? Got so we're you, starting, okay. we're getting more data in that rather than just saying, oh, that looked a little bit closer than the car before. Mm. And I think all of these little insights that we're able to portray, you know, that's just one example. We also have, you know, all of the pit stop timings that's there. If we think a car is going to undercut another car, so how much we think the undercut threat is or risk okay. is. So portraying all of these little insights that really help explain to the viewer at home what is going on in the race. Because some of F1, particularly in terms of if a car, if they're not battling beside each other on track, but one through the pit lane, it's quite hard to see the full picture. And now we're able to portray aspects of that full picture. And the more of that that we can do, the more that we will bring fans on board, which is what is happening in the race. It almost makes telling the story much easier. I yeah, think if, you, if you look at a sport like football, you can see the full picture, yeah, can't exactly. you? Yeah, exactly. And it's just any of those statistics that we don't have to calculate live, that has been done for us and provided to us, helps us build that picture, build that story. Um, and that should really embrace fans and, and make a much more interactive viewing platform. I've heard the term track pulse before. Can you tell me what is that? So basically it's a way of indicating we're on track, the next bit of action is going to happen quite okay. simply. And like you sort of mentioned the football example, sometimes it's clear you're just following the ball so you know where that goes around the pitch. But in a race it might not be P1 or P2 where the next bit of action is, but that's naturally where the camera goes. Because we're covering such a vast area, it's able to say, okay, we can see one car closing on another car, we can see a car is just on a pit stop this is where the next bit of action may be. Right, okay. And hopefully that's directing our cameras, our commentary, and building up to the next bit of action that we see happening on track, rather than relying on someone picking up on it externally. Okay, so we've spoken about previous technology and it being introduced, we've spoken about current technology. Can you tell me, what do you see for the future of generative AI in Formula One? Yeah, I think, we, to be honest, a lot of us we don't know because We've developed so much from where we were 10 years ago, we kind of imagine where we are now. But I think there's some really interesting developments coming. I think from a strategy point of view, from a team side, there's much, much more that we can do with Gen AI, particularly with all the data that we have historically. So lots more, I think, to come from a team side, as well things like pit stop and, and driver well-being side. I think there's a lot in terms of saying, okay, how do we properly prepare a driver for each race that he's doing, which, yeah. Um, AWS is doing in other sports from a player side so there's lots I think to come there um, and then the final thing I think is from a fan insight I think there's much much more we can do and excited to how much we can portray things like the stat bot onto our screen how can we improve the visualization of those tools for fans and um, so yeah I'm excited for where we can go in the future.